Hi, welcome to a video about optimizing the airflow for GPU cooling in the 780T, the Corsair 780T case. You know, one of the things I've been very fortunate to be able to do lately is to eliminate all my spinning hard drives from my case. I've been able to uh, get myself a, close to a one terabyte SanDisk drive, which is good for a lot of my media. I'm not a big movie store store of movies so I have uh, three SSDs in the back of the case as you can see which is really nice about this case you can put three back there and then one M2 drive which you can't really see uh, in this video because it's behind the graphics card which again is not the best placement given that these things can get quite warm the M2 drives nonetheless what happened is I got a lot of better cooling um, in the graphics cards and in, in gaming I noticed once I put in this uh, Corsair Maglev 120 fan and uh, decrease the obstruction from the hard drives in the front which is coming from this cage now this is easily removed by a couple of bolts on the top of the of the um, cage and then there's a base a plastic base that's easily removed by from the bottom of the 780T case through a couple of bolts and so when that's removed, geez, you have a lot of room for airflow. In fact, you can even put Big Daddy in here and uh, he can sit quite comfortably in the case and you're good to go. Now, the idea is that we link this particular fan, this Corsair 120, with using SpeedFan to the temperature of the two graphics cards. And this brings air into the case from the bottom. And I should point out what I also did was make these uh, well, let's call them standoffs. Just gives me a little bit more clearance on the bottom of the case from what comes standard with the Corsair 780T, which is about an inch clearance, and then I've added an inch clearance with these wood pieces of wood, really, there's wood, painted them black, and uh, just gave me about two inches clearance for, again, intake clearance for the air. So we have air then coming in from the front fans, which I have on uh, according to the um, uh, the controller up on the top, which I run about at uh, seven volts or about uh, half wave, half powered or so. And then I have air coming in from the bottom um, connected with speed fan. So these two air flows, in particular this one, create a lot of positive pressure in the case, which is important. You want to have a positive pressure, generally speaking, for the best cooling option. Now these will mix the air from here and the air from here will mix and match but I did notice a better cooling overall in the graphics cards from having this fan linked with speed fan to these two graphics cards. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video and just show you what I'm, temperatures I'm getting in a, a couple of games. And I think it's a, a useful mod and a, a fairly simple mod if you can have this case and you're able to eliminate your hard drives from it. Okay, we'll get on to some uh, temperatures in games. Okay, we're back and I need to show you a couple things before we actually get on to some gaming uh, comparisons of temperature. I do overclock my cards using MSI Afterburner and I do so with 162 on the core clock. Power is maxed and that with the boost that brings me uh, about 2000 megahertz on the core clock and then I put a little bit on the memory, only 100. Um, not a strong advocate of, of overclocking memory too much. But I also importantly have a fan curve in, in MSI Afterburn and that's shown down here so that roughly at uh, for instance at um, temperature of 60 degrees on the card the fans are spinning up to 70 and at 70 degrees on the cards the fans are spinning up to can spin up to 85. My theory is or my preference is not to have my cards go over around 75. That's what I like to have my max, even though they're rated to go much higher than that, like another 10 to 15 degrees higher than that before they'll really start to uh, throttle back. Um, okay, so that's just to let you know that. Now I'm gonna monitor temperatures in uh, HWIN FO64, and I have uh, GPU um, fan speeds and temperatures being monitored with Obviously, the, the um, upper card is hotter than the lower card. Um, that's the nature of Beast and the SLI. Consequently, the um, fan speeds are a bit faster on the upper card to keep it cool, according to this fan curve, of course, even, even at idle, um, with no GPU load, really. 
Now, the other thing, the most important part of this video is this program called SpeedFan, and probably a lot of you are aware of SpeedFan or have used it. Um, but it's very useful for linking specific fans in your case to a specific hardware device. And in my case, that's the GPUs. So my four fan, which is auxiliary um, uh, two, this is my other auxiliary three and auxiliary and CPU fan. Those are my Noctua fans cooling the cooling the CPU. But this is my floor fan, the maglev. And it's only running at about 470 with no load on the GPU really and that's really low that's a nice thing about these fans is they do spin quite they spin down I think it's 400 and um, can spin up to I think it's 2000 if I recall correctly um, so and they're quite quiet I was quite impressed with uh, their um, their design and um, the fact that they are quite quiet and I did notice quite a lowering in temperature uh, lowering of noise in my case overall once I replaced my previous floor fan, which was a Corsair AF120, with this fan. So um, now, the how you link this with um, your GPU temperatures is not going to be described in my video. It's rather uh, a good tutorial, but I'll show you where to go. You should go see Jay's two cents worth, and uh, he he's a great guy. He's got lots of of uh, uh, great videos, but. This is the one I really liked um, more recently is how to set up SpeedFan um, for uh, linking uh, SpeedFan with your GPUs or any other uh, case uh, temperatures or CPU temperatures. So that's go see that video and it'll show you how to link up that. The other thing you need to do is also um, auto run SpeedFan and startup. You'll want to do that because SpeedFan is down here and you'll um, uh, every time Windows starts up, you'll be able to just have it start automatically. And I've actually set to, to start up 30 seconds after boot up. Don't have to do that. I just decided to do that. Um, and it's automatically applied. Of course, you can always just manually apply it every time you, you um, uh, manually open it every time you go to game. So that's up to you. But it's a, a useful thing to have it auto start up with Windows. Anyway, two tutorials for you to refer to. Um, beyond this and I'll put the links in the video description as well but now we'll get on to some uh, some temperatures and frame rates in a couple of games okay some results here for you for a couple of benchmarks I ran the valley benchmark with uh, three loops in succession to allow the graphics cards to get up um, nice and warm and sort of be at equilibrium and um, which are three at 45 minutes just standing still in Novograd high arc square for the same sort of idea and basically what you can see from this table is there's not a lot of difference in the numbers there's um, very little impact of uh, fan speed on um, the actual thermal temperatures of the GPUs and you can tell this because the max fan speed of the GPUs is this is what they're running at and it's pretty consistently the same over all of the various scenarios or settings I have here on the left so for various combinations of speed fan enabled with no hard drive cage no speed fan no hard drive cage, no speed fan with the cage, um, speed fan enabled, no cage, max case fans, and so forth. There, there's really not a lot of difference. Now, where there was a bit of difference was when we had the max front case fans and exhaust fan as a result on the highest setting, so 12 volts, spinning at the max that they can spin. And what we saw was that the average temperature, at least, for GPU 1 and GPU 2, so upper and lower GPUs, was better than the other situations, but again, only by a couple of degrees, and, and the delta of a maximum delta of 4 degrees. So, yeah, there's some benefit here, but I'm thinking that most of this benefit's coming from the front fan, not the floor fan. So, all right, so we don't see a lot of difference here, regardless of the scenario. Um, coming from uh, anchoring the speed fan with the uh, GPU temperature. So what can we say in all of this? Well, we can say that the case fan speed has little effect on the GPU temperature. It's like one to two degrees Celsius. 
um, that is at, the, at least at 7 volt setting on the front of the case fan. In the 780T's case, this is good airflow, so I think a lot of air is coming into the case regardless, and that really, that most of the thermal uh, temperature is being regulated by the um, by the fans on the GPU. Uh, it's really more important to have a positive air pressure in the case, just have air come in so that the GPU fans can gather that and cool your GPUs. Uh, so the floor fan regulated by speed fan had little of impact on the GPU temperature as we saw and removing the hard drive cage really had little effect and actually neg it benefited a little bit, one to two degrees with uh, case floor fan enabled. I think the, the, the airflow from the case uh, floor fan was actually traveling up the side of the hard drive cage and then um, directing itself better into the upper GPU. So yeah, it seemed to benefit in the end, which is curious, but that kind of makes sense. And as I said, the best average GPU temperatures we're seeing with the max case fans and um, the floor fan regulated by uh, speed fan uh, according to the GPU temperature. So that was the best scenario. As I said, GPU temperature 99% regulated by the fan curve, you know, so as long as you have good air flow into the case, don't worry about this. FPS was not really affected. I didn't show this in the table, but I can tell you it, was, it made little difference in the actual FPS. And I think though, if, if your delta temperatures were a lot different uh, consistently, if we had five to 10 degrees difference with um, uh, testing the fa uh, various fan combinations, then we would, might see a little difference here, well, quite a bit of difference on thermal throttling and this limit um, here uh, that would regulate your FPS. Because when you hit this, when this LIM1, LIM2 turns to one, your your uh, clock speed in megahertz drops down. So you wanna try and avoid that as much as possible. Now that is also regulated by your voltage. So that's not only a thermal throttling issue, it's also a voltage issue. And some people like to overvolt their video cards. I do not, because I don't know if there's a lot of benefit in the end, quite honestly. But um, thermal throttling also has an impact on this um, these limiters, let's call them. I think in the end, a couple of, uh, well, two or three ML120s in the front of a case will really help. They're quiet, they bring a lot of air into the case, and they perhaps better direct the air into the intakes of the GPUs rather than from the floor. So anyway, um, I think uh, if I was to do this again, I would probably run out and buy myself some ML120s for the front of the case, and who knows? Um, you know, with these fancy new glass cases that Corsair has out right now, they, they are quite attractive. They have the ML LED versions on the front of them. They're uh, something to look at. They're not, they're not cheap, but they're quite nice. So anyway, that's it for me, and I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, learned a little bit. I certainly did, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.